Hi, my name is Dipsy Abiola, and I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Intern Avenue. I'm really delighted to be speaking at this conference today because, amongst other things, it's just been amazing to hear such thought and debate about some of the very, very important issues that are going to be facing us as Europeans when we look at digitalization and seeing where that can take us. I'm also incredibly proud and looking forward to developing our relationship with the Vodafone Foundation, who are supporting some of the things that we are doing. And I wanted to share today um, uh, a thought process of how we can all be partners in creating more opportunities for what I like to call pre-professional talent. I use the word pre-professional because that's effectively a huge talent pool, which is um, incredibly useful, but being underutilized in Europe today. We've heard a lot about um, the struggles and the challenges that young people face, and perhaps the pessimism that they feel um, about their prospects um, in Europe and indeed in general. But we have also seen time and time again that young people have a limitless potential to do the incredible. We know that they have the capacity to build billion dollar businesses. We know that they can form change and be awarded Nobel laureates, even at an incredibly young age, under the, under the age of 20. There are, however, 5.4 uh, million young people in Europe who are out of work. And it is thought that even six months out of work for an individual at the early stages of their career can create a wage scar of 50,000 pounds over their lifetime. This is a collective issue for all of us because the costs at the state and individual, right down to the individual level, is very great. I am, many people would probably say, what might be an unusual entrepreneur. Um, a couple of years ago, I was working in my law firm um, uh, my, my former law firm, and a partner popped his head round into my office and said, we need some fresh blood, as indeed all businesses do. And I said, yes, let's take on the bold, let's take on the bright. In fact, I'm going to spearhead our initiative in this, in, in, in this and I'm so excited about it. It didn't take me very many weeks until I decided that I'd taken or perhaps bitten off more than I can chew. Anyone who has gone through the process of trying to identify people with the right skills in the junior end of the market would face frustrations. I couldn't believe that we were in the 21st century and we were doing very antiquated um, uh, processes to try and find talent. And frankly, it made me mad. Because whilst we had opportunities for young people within our organization, and they could do great things within our, um, my former organization, you know, finding those people was expensive and time consuming. And then on the flip side, I met um, a young graduate who was leaving university who was uh, incredibly talented, but she said that after um, eight months of trying to find work, she had moved back um, uh, uh, to her family home, and um, rather than taking on the career choices that she had hoped for, she ended up uh, taking uh, a job that she didn't feel satisfied in and, you know, was intermittently in and out of work. This seemed to me to be an outrageous shame. So I did the only thing that I felt that I, I could do. I believe in making bold choices. So I quit my job in a blaze of glory and announced to my friends and family that I was going to create an easier and better way to connect people. We have seen um, that there are a number of ways that um, technology can remove the obstacles and in so doing mean that people start doing things that they didn't before. Who could have known even a couple of years ago that having the ability to hail a taxi cab from within your house rather than to step out onto the street would end up creating what's estimated to be 50,000 jobs a month and more in just one of the major companies that provide these services. Convenience and discoverability is something that digitalization can really give to us all. And so, with that in mind, I decided that what better 
task to put the data that we have available to us than just discovering what talent there is out there. So, I went, um, you know, with my, my legal background, not looking like a, a couple of kids from Google, um, uh, but still very passionate. And I hunted down the best people I could find in HR, technology, and also in education, and asked them why, you know, what were the challenges of discovering um, uh, young talent? And I had this epiphany moment. It's about creating shortcuts. And the simplest way of doing that is using profiling data and predictive technology and algorithms to standardize who is actually available in the market. We've heard a lot today about um, the, uh, the number of jobs that, or, uh, that, that can't be filled, but we don't know enough about the talent that's out there in the first place. So it seemed to me making that talent discoverable uh, and easy for as many people as possible was the key thing to do. We launched in 10 Avenue at the end of 2012. Um, focusing um, in pilot stage on the UK market, but with a hope to take what we're doing further. And I've been delighted by what we've managed to achieve to date. I appeared on Dragon's Den, which is always an interesting uh, experience for any entrepreneur. Um, we were delighted to have won um, a number of awards, and we found that tens of thousands of candidates were joining our platform. We know a lot about these people. 11% of them are, are academic award holders. 16,700 of them ha have held positions of responsibility within their clubs, societies, and communities. And in, the, in, in taking an approach that bases um, mainly on data and making it discoverable so that employers are empowered to find the right people and automating that process, we believe that we could create a solution that really made people change the way they saw junior talent and invite them into their organizations. We are now at a point that one of our employers has, within 24 hours, hired a great young person, and this is just the beginning of what we hope for our um, startup. We've heard um, uh, today uh, from uh, uh, other entrepreneurs about the challenges of building companies in Europe. The cynical will say that there's not enough funding, there's, um, uh, it's too difficult for people, and there's a siren call to the US um, uh, with uh, VCs with, uh, with money and, and people wanting to drive innovation. But I'd like to leave everyone with a final thought. It takes, there's an African proverb that says it takes a village uh, to raise a child. Um, and I think that Europe is a wonderful village to start up a company and also um, uh, to reach out and make sure that we have um, uh, uh, better opportunities for all. And just in us all being in this room, coming together, thinking about ways that we can make things different, um, and the Vodafone Foundation taking a chance to contribute um, and, and partner with a startup um, such as mine is just part of the way that Europe is showing that we um, are still a place for innovation. And, um, uh, uh, and I'm delighted and would be delighted to talk to you all about how we're going to take this journey forward. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.